Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Antimatter Chemistry. Uh, this is what happens when you leave me alone for the weekend, and I can do a lot of building, and I can move everything around, and it make it look really cool. There was a suggestion in the comments that I should build a Rubik's Cube. I think it was for this cube, but I decided the best spot is around our ME controller since we have it color labeled with all of the cables, and I think it looks really cool inside of here. Uh, I am thinking though that maybe once we get the rainbow generator going, we could go and switch over to these uh, wireless uh, receivers and connectors because those will be just easier than running cables everywhere. And that way we can pretty much connect the other cubes however we want. Because I was thinking not just doing like another connection kind of like we have right over here with the black antimatter. We could do another five of them each centered on the Rubik's Cube and I think that would look really cool. But a cooler solution would be if we have the cubes that we connect to connect to basically different spots. So maybe like out of here or out of one, then out of there, one out of there, whatever. And we can do a bit of differentiation of how we go with the, the tunnels. Let's say we would pull the tunnel, I don't know, over to, let's say here. And instead of just building a cube here, we take a turn and we go like this way, and then we build a cube there. And that would make the base look really wonky and weird and cooler in a sense, in my opinion. And we can use the connectors, as I said, for uh, the connections, because that would mean, I assume that that would be less lag, because the connector can just uh, transfer 32 channels if we hook it up to a dense cable directly, and we don't need to use P2P tunnels anymore. Uh, so we'll see once we get to the rainbow gen if we can do that. And I think that's gonna be close to my goal to get to the rainbow gen as fast as possible, because I wanna get the power sorted out. And inside of here, I decided to set up drawers in a five by five manner. And we have four of those with regular drawers and four of those with the compacting drawers. And here in the middle, we have our uh, periodic table. And on top here, I kind of color labeled some of the, uh, I think it's pretty much most of the uh, compounds. That's the one, that's the word I was using for, <laughs> looking for. Uh, we have most of the compounds here that we're gonna use. I kind of got rid of most of the ones that I didn't need. I just basically looked here for alchemistry and you can see here all of the compounds are basically just all of these. And I looked through all of them that the uses and all of that and how we get them. And I think this is mostly what we'll use. I think some of them we might not even use at all. But uh, over here, I also reset up our um, loot crate opener as well. Uh, we're gonna set this up in a permanent way at some point. For the time being, I've just been grabbing loot crates out of here, tossing them in here, and then they get opened up. And everything that can go into the storage system uh, is going through here. So that's clay, drops of evil, diamonds, certus quartz, blaze rods, dimmed parcels, and white antimatter. Uh, and the rest just stays in here. So basically the storage upgrades, silo, cybin, I butchered that name probably. Uh, energy upgrades, hardened upgrade kits, and all of the storage upgrades for the drawers. Uh, the rest just gets trash canned because we don't really need it. Okay, so the plan for today is to finish with the move of the base. I wanna just take this floor and bring it down by a couple blocks so we can just copy paste it. Uh, then I wanna move all of these tanks possibly into the wall over there to make it look really nice. And we can hook them up to the storage system as well. So we can use export uh, buses and import buses or whatever to import the stuff that we need to. This guy is gonna stay here for the moment. I also wanna move those, actually, I'm not gonna move those. We're just gonna get something better, which we can do this right now. So the if we look at mill, we can get ourselves a dragon mill. Uh, we just need to make one of these. I have redstone, dragon mill, and we're gonna grab a dragon egg. And we can put this, do we wanna put this somewhere where we can see it? Here, perfect spot, dragon egg mill. We now have 500 GP. Okay, so we can basically get rid of all of these and just cover it up because they're no longer necessary. We could still, if we would need a bunch of GP for something, we could set up water mills to get us extra GP and we can basically set up each one of the mills uh, up, to the, uh, up to the efficiency loss. So for example, we can set up enough lava mills to create 200 GP and then we can set up water mills to create 64 GP and windmills up to 512 GP, but they are very inconsistent, I think. 
the fire mills up to 40 GB. So yeah, and the creative mill we can't really create, so it should be fine. I am actually gonna make three extra dragon mills uh, or dragon egg mills, and you can see how the power loss is gonna come into play. If we set uh, two of them up, instead of getting 500 and 500, we get 750. And if we do another one, we get 875. And then I think if we do another one, we should get 900. So that's plenty of GP. And what we're actually gonna do, I can't mine these now. Um, yeah, I have to do the whole torch thing if I wanna move them. We could put one in each corner, uh, or we can put them somewhere down here. I don't know yet. Well, they're gonna stay there for the moment and we'll figure out a spot for them later. I'm gonna go around the place here and just cover up all of these black spots and we're gonna figure out what sort of thing we're gonna put on the walls. But for the time being, I just need this covered because I'm setting up the ender tanks and they are gonna need some space behind them. So I wanna just have as much space as I can to figure out how we're gonna hook up these ender tanks to all of them. So I'm just gonna cover up this side as well. Shouldn't take too long. I'm gonna run out of antimatter here. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do that in a moment. But I have the black hole controller version 2.0 and this guy, ooh. Oh, do you work? Can I put a tank even in here? Oh, so this works this way. Okay, hold on. If we do a, if we do this guy, can I even make one? need a fluid interface, I can make one, wonderful. So if I do this and then grab a storage, uh, not a storage, a uh, smart cable, a couple. So how are you gonna, you work probably like this and that is kind of not how I imagined this. I thought you were like a drawer controller. Uh, so if we do this, we can see fluid water and what we can then do is we can put all of these in here and then we can see, okay. I mean, it's a simpler solution, but it's a less visible solution than what I wanted. Okay, so I thought it worked like a drawer controller. Uh, okay, you can see set up inputs and outputs, but basically that allows us to have all of the liquids in here and we can do by number of items here. I mean, it's simpler, but it's also, very much less visible, kind of like what I wanted. Okay, um, right. So I think we're gonna make a separate storage bus for each one of these. It's gonna use more channels, which is fine. And it's gonna be more entities or whatever. I don't think they're entities. But I wanna have a visual thing of uh, all of the tanks. And then I need to figure out somehow how we're gonna xnet stuff from the ender tanks to those, uh, to those tanks that are in there. But I think we should be able to get it sorted somewhere in here. If I have the black hole tanks like this, it looks much, much better because you can see the color of the liquids inside. And for the slots for the ender tanks, they're gonna be right here. I haven't set them up yet, but I basically labeled each one of these connectors. So this one is zombie pigment, and for example, this one is mob essence. So what we can then do here is we can look at connector lava and we need an item channel. So actually we need a liquid channel. So we're gonna do this set up a fluid channel. And let's look at lava. We're gonna set an extract here with 5,000 like so. And then we need to come over to the tank and see lava right here. And we set up an insert. And what I actually need to do is I need to grab a bucket of lava. If we press V, we can do that. And we're just gonna filter this for lava because that way we don't, if we ever empty out the ender, uh, the ender tank, the, if we empty out the black hole tank, for example, because we only have one bucket of lava right now, because I, uh, I can't add more than one with this reservoir. Uh, if we empty it out, it will then start putting a random liquid uh, in if uh, we didn't have it filtered, but with a filter, it's not gonna become an issue. So I just need to grab one bucket of each of the liquids. So one meat, one of these, one of these, and I think I have the water and I'd grabbed a couple of essences and we can simply set up everything on the same channel with filters and it should work just beautifully. I wanted to firstly set up the ender tanks over here, hence why the power is moved underneath the floor here because I thought I needed space. I was having issues by accidentally having more than one controller on the same network and I thought it was the amount of connectors because I read it wrong 
And uh, you can have pretty much as many connectors as you like on one network, I believe. Uh, you just get the eight uh, channels for all of them. So if you have too many things that you need to transfer, you run out of channels. But uh, the power down here is set up in the exact same way as it was before, just in a different uh, variety, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but basically you can see, you're gonna see it in action here. Uh, the energy cell is draining power and we have the RF monitor here detecting for more than 95% and less than 5% here on this one. So as soon as this gets uh, less than 5%, it's gonna extend this piston or it's gonna pulse the block out. And uh, once it does that, it's gonna trigger all of the generators that are set to be active on redstone signal. And they're gonna start providing power to this energy cell, which is all transferred through this guy on the inside. We have an insert here and an extract for the coal. So that's going from the drawer. And then we have an extract and an insert to the cell for the power. Uh, and then we also have an extract and an insert to provide power to this controller so it can always run. I could just put down a wireless RF transmitter here but uh, and not have an issue, but it's simple to just transfer some power with another connector. So if we wait a little bit longer, you should see this trigger. There we go. We triggered the redstone block and we're having these all produce 800 RF per tick until this guy is filled up back to... 95%. So that is our simple power solution for the time being. And since we're running the wither skeleton spawner, we have insane amounts of coal. We have 658,000, um, which is just an insane amount of coal. So uh, that is neato. Uh, and it's solving our power issues for the time being. As far as the dragon mills are concerned, we're gonna set up eight of these right in here, right underneath our elevator, and then I'm gonna cover them up with some glass, like so. Uh, and because eight provide us, if we look in here, with a thousand GP, which is a rounded, lovely number, and that's just gonna stay that way. Okay, so what I wanted to do next is to set up some dislocator pedestals. Uh, if at some point some Patreons start playing the server here, uh, they can use these dislocator pedestals like I can to go to different dimensions. Eventually, I'm gonna have, if we look at dislocator, I'm gonna have this advanced dislocator and we can just transport ourselves around with this. But for the time being, we can make actually these regular dislocators. So what we need is to set up a bunch of these. I'm gonna grab one, two, three, four, five, six. We have the nether, we have the end, and we have the autumn, and we have the deep dark. We need another one, or another set, I should say. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, let's say, to the end right now. Uh, we're gonna right click this. Okay, and in here, I don't really wanna set it up over there in the center, so we're just gonna put it like somewhere over here, for example. Um, this should be fine, and we can shift right click this to bind it to here. And if we do slash home, yeah, we don't really need a home dislocator, to be honest. Um, I mean, we could have it for other people, but if we put uh, this guy, let's say right here, and then we right click this, we should be transported to the end without having to click the end kick. Uh, I could set up another a home dislocator. That could be a thing for other people to use, I guess. Well, for the time being, we're not gonna, cause it's not really necessary. So if we then go to the deep dark, which is gonna be the real neat thing, uh, and we cannot ever have to stand on this deep dark portal and get transported ever again, because we're gonna set up an, a dislocator, let's say right here in front of the weather skeleton spawner, right? in the center some something something like this right that should be fine if we head on home and we toss this guy down we can put it right over here in the middle and we can go to the deep dark i'm going to set up another one for the autumn and that is all that we need right now actually the nether as well and at some point we're going to have a different uh, number of dimensions and we can just put dislocators to those dimensions we don't need to dial them up with uh with the dialing device eventually. I think for the nether, we're just gonna set it up here by the fortress. I already tore down my nether portal cause we don't really need it anymore. And we can go back home. And I changed the home to be our inside of the base, which is incredibly dark. And we need to uh, sort that out once we, uh, once we get, uh, get some time. 
but anyway so in here we're gonna have color coded blocks color coded dimension coded let's say so cobblestone is gonna be the deep dark end stone is the end nether brick nether limestone is for the autumn and then whatever we set up next is gonna be set up over there i also made a bunch of these dislocator pedestals that we can use uh, for the future so that should be lovely i currently i firstly wanted to use signs but just coding them with blocks is much nicer so this nether portal doesn't need to be a thing anymore oh that's incredibly slow if i'm flying okay uh, i decided to cover up and actually I filled all of it in, the mine that we set up for the antimatter in the beginning. And in here we can uh, cover this up. We don't even need this portal anymore, so that can go away. Uh, and we can just cover that up. And I'm going to get, uh, we also don't need this. And I'm going to clean up this as well. I think we're just going to tear it down and set up the elevators where they are. And that should be good. The easiest way to tear something that you can't vein mine is to change it to something that you can, which is cobblestone, for example. So I can just go around here and exchange everything. Even the lamps don't need to be a thing. And we just change it up and then we can easily vein mine it and remove it. The last thing that we need to remove here is this guy, which I kind of changed a little bit in between episodes. I used to just have an ender tank here that was extracting the water into here, but I believe using a chiseled bit to water, you get a bit more bang for your buck. So here we have a timer on 220 ticks, which is, I believe, 12, uh, 11 seconds or so, which is just filling up this tank with water. And that is then extracting just the, all of the bits going into here. And it's currently condensing it into singularities. I wanted to make at least a stack of those. If we ever need to transfer applied logistics power cross dimensionally, we can do it that way. But for the time being, this will all just uh, be removed. We're going to take this off. Actually, um, I could have, I think this is, is this going to drop bits? It's not. Okay, wonderful. I thought it was going to just drop all of the bits everywhere. So we can grab this guy and this guy and we can put them in the drawers. And all that's left is just that guy, which is going to stay there for the time being. We can find a proper spot for it at some point later. I also needed to make a 64k ME storage component to run that matter condenser for the singularities. So we're just going to get a storage cell of 64k here, uh, like so. And I'm going to grab the... Uh, what is it called? IO port. We can toss you right here. Uh, what else? Did, did I have another thing that is used for anything? But we're going to put this guy right here. And then we can do this and just transfer all of the bytes over to that one. And we can then grab all of these and just toss them in here. And it should just filter off everything that uh, could go onto here. And it's going to fill it up with types mostly. But then we can put the 16K. And that should empty out one of the 4Ks. Put the 4K in here. Like so. Like so. Like so. Like so. And there we go. So we have a bit more space here. Uh, I think that should be fine. We can now cover all of this up since it's fully set up and we can do white antimatter here on the corners and then we can do cable facades like so to cover this up and I'm going to go around here as well because this all needs covering up so we can I think I can just right click yeah because there is no connector except for in around the top where you sneak right click so that should cover all of this up and make it look nice and pretty. I started to make all of the generators for the rainbow generator that we need and we're missing two which one of them is the most difficult one which is the nether star generator for which I think we need to get to the extreme crafting which requires draconic evolution so for that we need to do the whole dimension builder thing but we can at least get the halitosis one it requires end rods which are made with americium americium ingots which is a whole thing from nuclear craft. But I assume that in the end, we can find ourselves some end cities, which spawn with end rods. So I think that should be the easiest solution for this. So we're just going to take one of these and we're going to, hello, like, let me fly. Thank you. We're going to come over here and we're going to try and find an end city. And that should potentially have end rods, I hope.
I wanted to quickly check in the quest book and it says end cities are disabled so we cannot find end cities so we can just head on home so we have to do the whole nuclear craft thing really oh that is annoying <laughs> like you could have just gated this guy which is enough but here it's just one end run and it requires this which requires us to get americium 241 or 242 or 243 and if we look here Ameri Americium. Uh, you can get this from RDG's blocks. Can I do? Oh, I can do Berkelium blocks, which we can do by isotope separating. We're going to have to go through the specific fuels. I think there is a chart. I remember a chart being on the internet where you can see which fuel you need to get to, and it shows you the path to get there. So I think I'm going to check that. I mean, eventually we're probably gonna, yeah, we're gonna need it for, for this eventually. Okay, sure, um, right. So uh, let us see what we need to do for dimension building, really, before we tackle any sort of fission reactors or anything. Uh, we can also do the whole fusion thing where we can combine two different elements to make a larger element, combining their atomic number. Ooh, can we do, this is 95, right? All elements except hydrogen can be created with the fusion multi-block. The multi-block accepts two elements as input and fuses them together to create a new element equal to the sum of their atomic numbers. Hold on, fusion reactor, we're gonna, or fusion thingy bomb. We're gonna do that, because that way we can just uh, combine, I don't know, something with a number 90 something, let's say lutentium. We have this is 71 and we can find the number, like say, what would be 30, 23? And we can combine those to get the next element. Oh, that's gonna be super easy. I managed to make two stacks of each of the tungsten and neodymium ingots, and we can now make the fusion controller with a bit of selenium, which we got before from netherwort. Here we go. And also fusion casings. We can now just toss all of this in here. Uh, and we need to get a stack and a bit, so it's 98, so it's less than 100. So that would be 60, 70, 82, I think that many should be enough. 94, four more, there we go. Okay, and we also need the three fusion cores, which should be doable. Yeah, we need, oh, we need a couple of fusion casings for this, so like that, and we also need to get another two sets of this, I think that should be all that we need, I hope. And we can set this up somewhere outside here as well. I'm probably gonna move that one close to here as well, so we can use both of them, but basically it's gonna be this, and then a five by five of these with a hole inside, and the three of these in the middle. This guy is now assembled and it has two modes, a single mode and a regular mode. I don't know what the difference is because it's not doing anything really differently in both of the modes, but I am combining two hydrogens to get helium, which is the number two slot and it's gonna go, hello, what is this? That was weirdness. Um, it goes into here and what we can then do is combine Neptunium, which is 93, plus the helium, which is two, and that should make us this americium, americium, possibly. So let's just get a bit more of this. I'm gonna stop you for the time being. Helium, no, no, ah, that's, I see. Okay, single mode, ah, gotcha. So regular mode just combines the two of them together, but this should get us, yeah, americium. Okay, that's a simple, cool way to do this. Okay, lovely, I don't need to go through all of the fission things or, Fusion react, no, fission reactors from nuclear craft. I don't need to do that. Okay, that's really neat. Okay, so I need to get how much? We need one end run, I think. So, actually, we need two. So I need uh, 32 of this, which should be doable very easily. Before I converted it to the ingots, I tossed it in here so we have it set in the drawers if we ever make more of it. And now we can make ourselves a couple of end rods by tossing this in here and then halitosis, I think, do I have popped cores? I totally don't have popped cores, fine. 
And by popped chorus, I mean purple blocks. We can now make one halitosis, two halitosis. And the reason why I'm making two of each of the generators is because the rainbow generator requires two slabs of rainbow generator bottom and top, and that requires each one of the generators. So uh, two is what we need. Okay, so for the nether star generator, we need to get into draconium because we need to do the whole neutronium compressor. But what is this this guy? It's 39, and you get this from yttrium ingots or the fission multi-block. Okay, so we need to figure out two of the easily procurable uh, elements that we can do, and then we need to automate those and combine them in the fusion multi-block and get these uh, yttriums and 5,000 of them to compress into the singularity that we need. I think the easiest solution to get this is through the fission multi-block. We can just separate gold to get enough yttrium and we need to separate 10,000 gold to get 10,000 yttrium and then we put that in the neutronium compressor. So the gold will be simple. We're just gonna make another chemical dissolver, I think. Chemical dissolver. That shouldn't be too difficult to make. Yeah, we can just make it straight off the bat. We're gonna grab, actually, we don't need a chest. We're gonna grab more servos and more ducts. Just give me a half a stack, please. Thank you. Okay, and we're gonna say, let's say, I'm gonna do the math of 5,000 uh, gold in gold blocks so I don't have to extract it that much. And what we can do is we can just break this chest here, put the chemical dissolver here, then we're gonna put the duct here and then the servo on top. And we're gonna put down a drawer with 5,000 gold piece, gold chemicals, not the gold ingots. Because if we put 5,000 gold ingots, we're gonna get 16 times that of this because each gold, uh, uh, each gold ingot procures 16, I believe. Procures, is that a fancy word to use? Come on, where are you, gold? Show up, please. There it is. Each gold ingot does 16. So I'm gonna do the math of how many we need. We then run it <clears throat> through the this guy, actually. Wrong, wrong machine. <laughs> Uh, we run it through this guy because we need to split the gold into the yttrium and the uh, the other stuff that it's gonna make zirconium, I think. Uh, and then we uh, we are gonna be good on that. I'm gonna put down a drawer here as well, just so we uh, can store all of that up. And we need to make ten thousand of this because I really asked five thousand gets you one nether star generator and we need two of them. One to craft the rainbow generator and one to actually use. And for this, we're gonna need 8,800 redstone blocks, which is 16,000, actually 17,200 uh, times two is over 30,000. So we don't even have enough redstone to do that. Um, which we are gonna get eventually, probably by the time that we need to do the nether star generator, because we need to go through the whole uh, extreme crafting table and draconium stuff, so that is gonna probably take a while, so I think we should be fine by then. We are gonna see if my math was correct. I think it's just a stack and a few of uh, these blocks. We need power. Yeah, we have power down here. We can do just a duct. Boom, boom. You should now have power and you can solve our goldy blocks. You're set to extract. You have gold inside of you and you're making yttrium and zirconium. And we can do that and that so we can store the uh, appropriate amount. And that is going to take probably five years to process because I don't know if, uh, if there's any sort of way that I could speed this up. But um, that should do its thing. I'm going to toss the rest of the gold in here because it processed. Uh, and yeah, we can just leave this be, and it will create us, hopefully, 10,000 yttrium if I did the math correctly. And I think this is a good time to wrap up today's episode. In between episodes, the server is gonna be running, so this should hopefully get processed. And for the redstone compression, we're gonna get to that once we get the neutronium compressor, which I hope that we can get to, or at least start getting to, in the next episode. So I want to thank you all so much for watching this one if you did make sure to hit the like button you can also subscribe to get notified when new videos go live and you can support me on patreon as well if you want and i will see you all in the next episode have a good one bye bye